Now, this is one of the very few naval items that I have in my collection. Believe it or not, this, if you can find it, is worth about 48 to 50 pound, say around about less than a hundred dollars nowadays. But paid about one pound fifty for it. Roughly two dollars. Many, many years ago. The only well, one of the very few naval items that I have, I'm gonna to have to go back there to open it up. It was issued by the Daily Telegraph newspaper in 1938. Okay. So I'll see if we can undo it. It suffered a bit in the folds. Really, it should be framed, but uh, I don't have anything big enough to frame it. Plus, I don't really have a naval collection, so it takes up valuable space that could be occupied by uh, military stuff. What this is, and it looks like I'm probably going to have to go back there to show you, but it's fairly delicate, but it is fairly nice. So what I'm going to have to do, you see that, see this, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I, um, there you are, look at that. All the ships of the British Navy Daily Telegraph chart, the world's most formidable fleet. Okay, so I need to go back there. So just hang on a sec. How about, I can, I can just about see myself. How about that? That's all, that's all the ships of the Royal Navy as issued by the Daily Telegraph in 1938. It starts off with all the, the little ships in the background up here at the top and then all the way down to the foreground at the front. It's like in there, uh, it's not, it doesn't look like a flat image, it's kind of set out in kind of panorama. It, it starts with the little ships in the background, the destroyers, and it comes down to the capital ships in the front, like the hood, which by 19, 1940 wasn't really floating about on the sea anymore. So. Circa 1938. So we'll undo that and we'll take a look at it anyway. And um, just hold on a sec. That's about right. Now, just bear with me. So we have this really huge fold out. And all the ships of the British Navy, the world's most formidable fleet. Daily Telegraph chart, especially drawn by Oscar Parks, circa 1938, given the ships that are on it. Um, it's all kind of alphabetically down the edge here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it's kind of alphabetically in sort of lines. So at the back you have the, the A. On the horizon... 171 destroyers, Iron Duke, Jellicoe's flagship at the Battle of Jutland, shown above the top line of ships towards the left of Pitcher and Depot ship. A, 51 minesweepers and patrol vessels. So line A is line A, which is this small line that goes all the way back. Then B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, all the way down. B, 39 escort vessels and two netlayers. C, cruisers. And it's got them all named. D cruisers which are built and building, E cruisers, F cruisers, G battleships and carriers built and building, H battleships, carriers, C plane tender and monitor, I battleships, battle cruisers, monitors and submarines, J patrol vessels, destroyers, escort vessels and gunboats, K escort vessels, minesweepers and mine layers. So, for example, some of them are generic, like this one, eight of these in the Grimsby class, 12 Hastings type. And you have going backwards, tribal class, then hunt class, and it kind of it kind of goes in from top corner to bottom corner. That's that's the direction the ships are all hidden, and they're all in kind of lines. So all of these in the middle, you have the Nelson, the Rodney, the Revenge, Royal Sovereign, Resolution, Remilies, Renown, Hood, Repulse. Terra, one of the gunboats, Argus, aircraft carrier, Albatross, Hermes, Eagle, Illustrious, Furious, Ark Royal, Queen Elizabeth, Valiant, Barham, Malia, Warspite, you've got this little caption here, hundreds of trawlers and drifters, 
and you have Triton Submarines, and it goes back up. King George V, Prince of Wales, Duke of York, Jellicoe, BT, Indigifatable, Indifatigable rather, Victorious, Formidable, Indomitable, Implacable, then you have Achilles, Ajax, Leander, Shropshire, Dorsetshire, Norfolk, Sussex, Devonshire, Kent, London, Australia, Canberra, Cornwall, Cumberland, Suffolk, Berwick, Exeter, York, then Southampton, Newcastle, Sheffield, Glasgow, Birmingham, Gloucester, so all going back up there. And the blurb that was with it reads, The Imperial British Navy is strikingly depicted in this panorama, especially drawn for the Daily Telegraph by Oscar Parks. The naval artist which shows what the composition of the Navy will be when the immense programme of new construction now in hand has reached full maturity. So it's circa 1938-ish. Most of the vessels depicted are already in service or approaching completion and today the British Navy is the most formidable in the world. The sign plus following the number of class indicates that additional units that are under construction. So we have a plus. Let's see if we can find a plus. There we are. So, by the time when this poster was new, there was 24 plus javelin class ships being built, 16 plus lightning class. That's what it pertains to. Um, the small vessels seen at the bottom of the picture, line K, are escorts, minesweepers, and mine layers. Line J is a column of patrol vessels, destroyers reconstructed as AA and anti submarine escorts, and other units, which, although constituting only the fringes of the fleet, are as essential to the maintenance of our sea power as their larger sisters. The next line, I, will be observed that the familiar outlines of the two Nelsons, the four sister battleships of the Royal Sovereign class, with the battlecruiser Hood, still the world's largest man of war. So the Hood was still afloat. And her modernised consorts, Repulse and Renown, and submarines and monitors. Above these, H, are the five Queen Elizabeth battleships, which have been practically rebuilt, with the aircraft carriers Ark Royal, Furious, Illustrious Eagle, and other smaller vessels of the same type. In line G will be noted the two new battleships of the Lion class, each of 40,000 tonnes, to be armed with 16-inch guns which have only just been laid down. The five almost equally powerful ships of the King George V type launched this year, and the huge 23,000 tonne group of aircraft carriers known as the Illustrious class, each capable of taking, say, between 60 and 70 aircraft. Above C, D, E, F ride serried columns of cruisers ranging from a few survivors of the war programme to the very latest types including the 10,000 ton Belfast and Edinburgh, the 9,100 ton Birmingham class, the 8,000 ton Fiji's which despite their moderate size mount 12.6 inch guns, mount 12 6 inch guns rather, and the small but exceptionally powerful fleet cruisers of the Dido group. The completion of all these vessels will bring us within measurable distance of the maximum cruiser strength of 70 specified in the white papers of defence. Together with the advent of scores of reconstructed escort vessels, not to mention the big aircraft carriers, they should go far to ensure the safety of our trade routes in wartime. In the background appear more escort vessels, minesweepers, patrol units, destroyers, depot ships, net layers, completing the vast and intricate organisation which is necessary for operating the greatest fighting fleet in the world. It should be added that this panorama exhibits no details of any new ships which have not been published, and in some cases, such as the Lion class of battleships, the illustrations of no more than a token significance. So the Lion classes hadn't been built, so some of them are pure fantasy pictures. The 1939 construction programme included two 40,000 ton battleships of the Lion class and four 8,000 ton cruisers of the Fiji class, which could not be shown in the picture. So it's 1938-1939. So a really rare survivor. Because I would imagine that come 1940-41, a lot of these posters would have gone for salvage. Because quite a lot of these ships wouldn't survive into the war years. So it's quite really very well drawn. So that's a Daily Telegraph chart. All the ships of the British Navy, circa 1938-1939. The world's most formidable fleet. And again, don't have room to store it, so it just remains folded up. But what a nice item. And current value of 48 to £50, around about $100 if you can find one.